And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Frazier and Dieter's Business Speed. I'm John Ray, alongside Frazier and Dieter's managing partner here in Alpharetta, Roger Lesby. Roger. Hey, John. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you. Hope you've had a great September. September's been good, a little rainy, but uh, we got past the September 15th deadline, and yeah. uh, just two more to go. You're looking chipper, a guy to be yeah. bad, pa- past that dead- yeah, past that deadline, right? Um, we've got an old friend here uh, with us, John Herbert. John is with Herbert Legal Group. John, welcome. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. So for those, for the three or four people that don't know you, describe describe what you're up to at herbert legal group and how you're serving folks out there sure we provide uh, business uh, legal services for small to medium-sized business because we saw a real need there it was a it's just a group of of companies not being their needs weren't being uh, met and we realized that those small companies also need legal services they're really essential to any size business and so we decided to get into that market, to, in, into that underserved market. And our philosophy is we can do 99% of what we do with a flat fee arrangement, which has been, which has gone over really well with that, with that business segment. And, um, yeah, we've been doing it since 2013 and, and we're rolling along and, uh, the model seems to work. So, uh, small business in, Particularly in Roswell, I mean, you, there's certainly been a lot going on in Roswell, but your practice goes well beyond Roswell as well. Yeah, we have locally, we have a a nice North Fulton footprint. Uh, we are currently officed in in Roswell, but we serve um, Alpharetta, Milton areas, um, and uh, and beyond. Some in East Cobb. We're actually we actually have a nice little business in East Cobb. Um, but we export a lot of services. I would say half our work is actually serving clients outside the United States. We have a really large South African uh, client base that we serve here in, in Georgia. And so it, it, it adds excitement to the day having clients from different places all over the world as well as our, our North Fulton clients here. Yeah, because, John, when I first met you, I thought that was the thing that was so unique about you and, and your firm was some of the international business and some of the international clients that you were working with. But uh, but still, your your bread and butter is still commercial real estate, uh, the small businesses that are up here in this North Fulton area. Uh, as you know, and as I know, we have great demographics up here in this area, and uh, so all that speaks well. But maybe talk a little bit about the commercial real estate side. Uh, and then we'll talk about the international side. Sure. Well, from a um, uh, investment standpoint, we're seeing more and more dollars chasing fewer and fewer deals, um, and that's really putting some pressure on cap rates and things like that. And so, the key in the market today is to get and 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 have the intelligence to be able to get in and scoop up a project before it actually goes onto the market. But there's been no slowdown whatsoever in in those acquisitions that we've seen and we just see things picking up among our clients as far as um, leasing goes. It's been interesting. I've, I've reviewed more leases in the last three months than I did probably in the, in the previous three years. People are really making moves on real estate. Um, mainly we're mainly seeing it in the um, hospitality sector. People um, looking to expand brands, um, people looking to expand locations, um, and, you know, despite the headwinds uh, of uh, employment problems in the hospitality sector, we're seeing these these companies look to grow. Yeah, and just to be clear, because we were talking earlier, um, a lot of the leases that you're looking at, contrary to the headlines, are not leases that they're looking to get out of and give up space, but these are startup businesses or people looking to either expand or to relocate. They, that's correct. We had we did some of that work last year, and for the most part, our clients were able to have some soft landings um, in dealing with landlords last year. But yeah, this year it's um, it's it's really taking off. And and just to be clear, you mean rest the restaurant sector in hospitality? Yeah, mainly restaurants. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and is that activity, John? Is that um, from the national chains, is that uh, entrepreneurial, local entrepreneurial activity? What does that look like? Well, obviously, um, as we all know, North Fulton is a chef concept, chef driven type market mm-hmm. that's um, 
Um, so it's not the chains. No, it is, it is local, um, entrepreneurs in that restaurant space. Yeah, we're, we're very blessed to have a, a great number of great restaurants up here too. So that's always exciting. Yeah, we're very lucky. We don't have to drive very far to get <laughs> yeah. amazing, amazing food. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> for sure. For sure. What, what are some of the things? I mean, let's talk to that, uh, owner operator that's looking for a space, maybe looking to take over a lease, something like that. What, what are some of the pieces of advice you would give someone like that? You know, um, more and more, you know, we now we look for things like pandemic clauses in the force majeure. You know, what happens if there's a, as, if there's another government shutdown? Let's go ahead and address that now ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Some landlords are reluctant to do that, but it becomes critical really for both sides to do that because normally in those types of situations, you may be excused from certain obligations under the lease if you're a tenant, but you're almost never excused of your obligation to pay rent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it, so we're we're looking at that. Um, one of the other important factors that people don't think about, especially if they're looking at a commercial lease the first time, there are things you're responsible for and it's anything that's inside that building. And that includes the HVAC units. So we really work hard with our, um, with our clients to go in, make sure those are inspected, um, make sure they have a good life in them. And if they don't, we have those things replaced before the lease starts because you, the tenant is 100% responsible for even replacing those units. And it's twenty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 cost mm. that you're not anticipating on top of your, on top of your, uh, on your lease. Because here in Georgia, you, you lose your HVAC, your, your, your business is shut. Mm. And, you know, so you're coming out of pocket as well as losing revenue. Right. Right. Yeah. A lot to look at there. Um, so what what are, I guess, what do you see in terms of maybe supply demand here? I mean, what does that look like from a real estate perspective? I mean, you're talking about the pressure on cap rates. Um, are we going to see a supply come along here that maybe uh, uh, gives us some room for that to go up or, or not? Well, uh, we we deal mainly in in medical real estate in our practice, medical office buildings. Mm-hmm. As far as regular office buildings, I don't think anybody really knows how that's going to go. You yeah. have you know you have different headwinds. You know, so you have companies expanding, you have companies pushing back from work at home. Um, so I don't I don't know if that's been worked out yet, and if people really know what that's going to look like in the future. And then you have companies that are outside of the North Fulton area moving to North Fulton because they're escaping a downtown San Francisco or whatever. Right. Uh, um, so that you've got that factor as well. Yes, yeah, sure. So you may run out, you may run into a supply problem on, you know, 20 miles away from a place where you have too much, too much uh, inventory. Right. So it's going to be so super, you know, you'll see small little bubbles, I guess, of, of different types of real estate demand. Now you talked about the medical building side and and you deal with a lot of investment into that sector what does that look like right now well you know the medical industry just continues to expand and the great thing about um i mean i shouldn't talk about this because i don't need anybody else getting into that business there's so much so little supply but um you know look doctors sign 10 20 50, you know 10 15 20 year leases um doctors pay their their rent on time um and you know, people, people continue to seek medical treatment more and more and more. So it's, it's really a growing sector. It's a good, safe investment, right? You're not going to double your money in 10 years, but it's a nice way to, to, to park money in a safe, um, safe investment and then, you know, live off of those dividends. Yeah. Plus you have the, uh, the huge demographics working in your favor with the aging of America. So, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. You know, so you, you look at medical office buildings and you start to think about, you know, um, communities and things like that as well. And, uh, so that, yeah, it's, it's, it's going nowhere, but, but, uh, but up in my opinion. Folks, we're here chatting with John Herbert. John is with Herbert legal group. Um, so, John, what what are the composition of those investors that you represent there? What do they look like? 
my main practice is um, clients from outside the United States looking for a safe place to put their money. Mm -hmm. Um, They gain already by moving their money out of their local currency into U.S. dollars. That's that's probably the, the the first foremost consideration for those folks. And then, look, they want to put it somewhere safe where they can get a, a, a good return. Uh, they can outpace inflation and uh, and build a build a nice nest egg for them in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's you know getting the money into U.S. dollars and parking it somewhere safe, and that's that's really who I work with. Uh, primarily, I work with uh, investors for, out of South Africa, but uh, there there are many other countries involved. Mm. Yeah, and and some of those uh, some of those clients are in some dynamic industries over there in Africa as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we have everybody from uh, you know commercial real estate investors there locally, uh, candy makers, uh, farmers, and uh, so it's 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 a really a wide range of of folks that are looking to invest into the, the investment here in the United States. Yeah, and and what. Um Maybe the way to ask the question is, you know, a uh, investor that's coming here internationally, what do they need to be aware of that maybe trip them up? I mean, we, what you said uh, emphasizes the safety and the, the, the legal system we have here in the United States, which is always a, a, a benefit to folks that want to make sure their, their uh, principle is secure, shall we say, and protected. But uh, what are some of the things that can trip them up? You know, it's more of a cultural mindset than anything, thinking mm-hmm. that they can come here and do things the same way they did things, you know, back in the – because these, remember, these are successful people. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bringing their investments here. So they come with a certain mindset that they have at home that, you know, certain things about that are – certain things about that carry over. But the cultural mindset here is so different. And we have a really rigid system. Uh, especially to somebody coming in from the outside. I mean, think about what your life would be like without a social security number. So mm-hmm. all, we take a lot of things for granted that they can't come do. They can't come buy a car. Right. They can't get car insurance. Um, they, it's difficult to open a bank account. Right. So just the, just the basics here, you know, while they're thinking up here on this high level, I'm going to invest all this money in the United States, but they can't do the simplest things that we take for granted every day from living here just by having a social and security And then there's number. the U.S. tax code that's out there that they have to work around. There's the yeah. legal requirements. But again, a lot of those are reasons that they're also coming to the United States is right. because of the protections, uh, the value in the currency. And uh, things of that nature. That's right. I mean, it, as complicated as the code can be, at least it's at least it's sort of settled. You know, it's not as as convoluted as places they may come from. Right. Yeah. You can depend on it. Yeah. You you uh, that's that, you must have some interesting conversations with folks, right? I mean, when when you're talking at high levels uh, about uh, investing in a particular property, and then at the same time you're talking about how they can get a car while they're here, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm here, I've invested, you know, all of this money. Uh, uh, what do I do? I'm not getting a Social Security number for nine more months, yeah, right? I, right? I can't do anything. Right, right. Um, which is which is interesting because what that says is there's there's value you provide that is really maybe not completely understood by a lot of international investors that might come to the U S it's, it's not just the, the law and the strategy. It's some pretty basic things under the surface, right? Yeah. I got to find a way to get paid for that. I'm just giving it away. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's just a benefit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I can see, uh, I can see how that's a, that's a value. What, what, what are the trends for that? I mean, do, are we going to continue to see, investment coming from places like South Africa into these uh, asset classes? In my opinion, you are. This is still the safest place, the best economy in the world. And, um, you know, unless something drastic changes, I see that continuing into the future. Yeah, and I agree. I think global business, both coming into the United States and exporting from the United States, will just continue to increase. I mean, it has to with the uh, with the Internet, with communications that are out there. Uh, people can, uh, you know, people can 
can get their products introduced pretty quickly now at a much more reasonable cost than what we could have done, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And look, from my standpoint, too, it's a stable legal system. You know, so my clients are even even among the states, they're looking at states that are landlord friendly and those types of things. So it's a stable legal system as well for when they come and invest. They can depend on on certain things being, you know, being there. And your uh, geography there goes, even though you're based here in the North Fulton area, your geography goes well beyond North Fulton in terms of the investment uh, geography that you work in, right? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, so we have, in addition to the law office here, we have, I have some uh, business activity in East Africa where we're doing biodiesel production there, um, mainly in Uganda, also in, in, uh, in Ethiopia as well. But yeah, we, we, um, I'm involved in a, in a company that plants, um, oil producing trees and we take that oil and convert it into biodiesel to sell into the local market. Oil producing trees. Yeah, they're nut trees. Right? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. That kind of oil. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Got yeah. It. So they, you grow. There are there are certain um, um, non food um, crops that that you use that are high in oil content, and then that's you know that's where we have the basis to make um, the biodiesel. But we're also now into making soap and lotions and cleansers. Um, the, the kids going back to school at university will all get a bar of soap made by our factory um, over there in Uganda. So it's, it's you know, that is a that is a fun, uh, you know, interesting part of my day that um, get to use some of my skills there. But that interaction with people from all over the world really makes makes the day interesting. Yeah, so those are pretty cool industries, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You've also got some mining going on over there too, don't you? Yeah, we do. We're in uh, the beginning stages of mining over there. It's interesting, you know. Um, there's always the the um, the question about what you want to mine. I mean, it's so it's such a rich uh, place as far as natural resources go, and so you know we're we're looking at a good mix of industrial metal, precious metals, of course. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting process that we're starting up. But then you've got the political overhang that exists in all the African countries. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. Um, we, we tend to be in more stable countries. Um, um, Ethiopia is, is having its problems these days, but we're, we're confident that that will get sorted out as well. So yeah, you just, you kind of have to, you you have to be ready for about anything. Um, so for all the benefits of, of working in Africa, particularly East Africa, um, there, there are the, there are the hiccups, but, uh, for us, it's, it's worth it to be there. It's very worthwhile and we're proud of what we're doing there. And Africa is not a homogenous kind of place. Maybe some folks in America might see it that way and the United States might see it that way, but it's a pretty diverse continent in terms of business activity and that kind of thing right yeah you'd be from one country to another you'd be surprised at how many people think it's a country right <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but of course northern africa and sub-saharan africa are two completely different places and yep. then you know um i've been to countries in west africa south africa east africa and yeah every place Every place has its own its own drumbeat, so to mm-hmm. speak. I mean, um, every every place is different. The people, I'll tell you this though: the people everywhere are lovely. That's the one. That's the one unifying factor about the, the uh, sub-Saharan Africa is, is the best people on the planet. Mm, yeah. Just the best people on the planet, and it's it's a pleasure to be there. And uh, um, you know, if you, you you people always see Africa as a as a project. You know that they're going to go there to to help change and help help them be better. But what I found out is it's, it's been the opposite for me. Um, they've actually made me a better person. Oh wow! By being there, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it you know it's it's an it's an incredible place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say more about that. I mean, what, what what you got anything examples you <laughs> you'd point out? Because I think that really runs counter to what people think, and that's a, that's a good thing to to. Uh, get out there you know um they're happy you know um they they tend to uh leave the villages to go work in the city Mm -hmm. but i never met anybody that didn't want to go back to the village 
um, in the in in the villages, you have you know three four generations of people living together. You know they're very family oriented. They take care of their older people. They're very happy. So they're more you know they're they're more family oriented than they are. Let's accumulate some things oriented. You know um, they they're happy because they don't have a lot of things to worry about. The so-called trappings of life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I, I don't let me, don't let me misspeak. I mean, a, a lot of sub-Saharan Africa spent, people spend half their day, um, get, you know, food and just, just to get food and water. Mm. So if you're spending half a day to take care of your food and water, there's not a lot of opportunity to advance, to advance yourself. Um, so those challenges, um, of course, remain. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're working on initiatives to help build a middle class there through our outgrowing schemes, where we um, we we look for people that have property and have the ability to grow trees, and so they get the seeds for these trees, and when they mature, we'll buy those seeds back uh, from them. And so now you've created, you know, four generations of wealth. Um, for that family through your, your outgrower scheme. Yeah. And so, you know, you're not, you're not going with a handout, you're giving them opportunities and, um, and you're, you're making it a better place. Not that it's not a great place already. Yeah. Very cool. And then we go from Africa all the way back here to the community. So tell us some of the things that you've been doing in the community, John, and uh, how you spend some of your time there. Sure. I've been really um, involved in the Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce. That's been a, a great investment of time and dollars for us. Um, that's where we've really found our spot. Um, living in Milton, I was asked to um, be the initial chair of the Milton Business Council, which is an initiative of the chamber. We had the Milton Business Alliance for a, a, a long time, and it was a great organization. I ended up being on the boards of both uh, the chamber and the Milton Business Alliance. And at some point it made sense for the the Milton Business Alliance to morph into being an initiative of the, of the chamber. And by doing that, we transform ourselves from a 100% volunteer organization to one that has staff dedicated to it as well. And, it's, and you know, the city's been a great partner in that too. Uh, there's a growing business community in Milton and it's 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 going to multiply quite significantly. Absolutely. A number of commercial buildings that have been built there, a number of restaurants coming yeah. into the downtown there, the new city hall. Exactly. So so the time is right, you know, this like I said the city have been good partners and um we've uh we actually started the organization in 2020, but we've had um great strides this year in 2021. And uh, it's it's been a great time for the city. Yeah. One thing I wish you'd address, John, because you're in a great position to do this, is I think there's a lot of people outside of of um, Milton that look at Milton and just say, "Well, I mean, how can they not succeed? Are they they're in the right geography, right?" They, they, but but there's more to it than that, and that's really shortchanging some of the work that's been done to make Milton successful, right? Yeah, it's a real challenge because you know people in Milton really want to to preserve the look and the feel that's that's made it you know special that makes people want to come there. So how do you accommodate a growing uh, population both in residents and businesses, yet preserve the look and feel? Uh, that brought them there in the first place. And it's a real uh, balancing act. But I think the developers and the city have both been very responsible for that. And um, I don't I don't see that changing any time in the future. So there's a good um, kind of agreed upon uh, way of looking at development, I guess, is maybe the way to put it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a uh, planned, cautious and and uh, measured yeah, uh, development, and uh, I, th- I think you know, you know, there's always pushback, but you know, when when there's good pushback, when there's two sides, that's where the that's where the good stuff comes out of that. Yeah, and so I think uh, both sides have been responsible in seeing how that how they can they can work together and uh, and come up with something pretty special. 
And so it, the time is right for the Milton Business right. Council. We're really excited. But about you know, it. as a Milton resident myself, uh, you know, we we certainly want to see the 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 personality and the character uh, remain as much as possible. It's kind of like the age old story. Well, you know, I'm here, so we don't want to change it now. But uh, but we also have a lot of people that will be, uh, you know, envious and uh, would like to move up into this region. And we certainly have a lot of reasons as to why. Yeah, you know, it's in a, a unique city in that there's there's not a central business district downtown. There's actually the downtown. The middle is where the people live, and the and the business districts are are kind of on the edge. You know, you've got Crab Apple as a location. Um, you've got the Birmingham as a location, and then of course up here in the Deerfield Parkway are really the three areas. So you can you can develop those areas, you know, cautiously, and yet still maintain the the residential feel in the center. Mm-hmm. John Herbert is with us, folks, with Herbert Legal Group. Um, so, John, talk about some of the, uh, I guess, the work of the Milton business council and uh how much it's grown i mean that that, this is really a growing part of the north fulton chamber it is so um we do have quarterly networking for our groups we Mm -hmm. call it network after work it's been very successful the first one we had in crab apple uh, back in april we had over 50 people there i called it the biggest uh, business meeting the city of milton's ever had (laughs) And that was after a couple of rain outs, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that one, that, it always rains on our day. So we were able to move in from the green into one of the empty empty, empty uh, spots there at Crab Apple Market. But, yeah, we had one at Matilda's, which is a completely outdoor venue. There is no shelter whatsoever. And so we actually postponed that once. And then the second date, of course, a hurricane hit on the Milton Business Council meeting date. And so we finally uh, squeezed it in this past week, and we had you know almost forty people up out in uh, the Birmingham district of uh, Milton, which is which is amazing. Which is a commitment to be there, cause it's, yeah. It's for those that aren't in the Milton area. So so you you've got folks that came in for. Let's that, just right? say it's North Milton. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's uh, it's still a nine iron to Alpharetta, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let, let's talk to uh, Milton business owners for just a second that may be thinking about becoming part of the Milton Business Council. And what, what does the chamber affiliation bring to that membership? Well, the Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce covers six cities here in North Fulton. So for me, as a, you know, for a Mil- Milton business owner, you're not only get going to get exposure to other Milton businesses, but you're going to be able to highlight yourself to the other six to the other five cities that the, that the chamber serves. And so there are all the resources, of the Milton business council, plus all of the many resources of the, of the chamber of commerce. And it's, it's, it's an amazing um, opportunity to both showcase your company within the city as well as the region. It, it, it allows you to get great re- regional exposure for what you're doing in your business. You know, Roger, we don't, we're here right in North Fulton. We don't think of North Fulton as a region do sometimes do we, but it, it's, it's got all the strengths and bells and whistles and, and attributes of a strong thriving regional economy. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, Wow. Lots, lots, uh, lots there. Um, John, anything we ought to add before we wrap it up here? Anything we ought to uh, know about what you're up to? No, listen, I, I appreciate you guys. I think we've had a, a good wide ranging discussion. We've gone around the globe and back to, to Milton. <laughs> that's right. you when you that. could go from Bi- Africa to Milton and back, that's pretty good, right? The sun never sets on our client base. <laughs> when do you sleep? That's the question. But maybe uh, maybe you Every can tell maybe you can tell listeners how to get get in touch with you. Sure, that's no problem. Um, my phone number is four zero four eight five zero zero one eight zero. That's our office number. My email is john at herbertlegalgroup dot com, and those two are the best ways to get in touch with me. Yeah, but before we let you go, there's one other thing I was hoping you would say, but I'm going to bring it up: is peppers. <laughs> You've got to talk about peppers briefly, okay? Yeah, so we've been we've had a, a farm, a little garden in the in the in the yard that's expanded every year, and uh, we, my wife and I, really got into growing the hot peppers because she likes to make the hot pimento cheese and other and other 
goodies with those peppers. And so we grow like the hottest peppers, scorpions and ghost chili peppers and, and uh, even the Carolina Reaper this year, which is new. And they're so prolific and they're coming in now. So we decided, hey, we just, uh, let's, let's see what happens because, so we started a company called sharecropper farms yep. and, uh, we really did it because we like sharing and that's part of the name. Yeah. Um, uh, we always say, you know, our, I guess our motto is sharing our favorite foods with friends, you mm-hmm. know? So we started, uh, yeah, started a little booth at the Milton farmer's market. Um, that's on Wednesdays from three to six. We're out there selling hot peppers, seeing the reaction to people, just looking at the peppers <laughs> is, uh, is really good. Um, we do it, look, we do it to support the market, but it's, it's fun. It's yeah. fun. I'm, I'm working my way up to the Alpharetta farmer's market. There, maybe you, one, there you go. Maybe one day this fall just to try it out. That won't be far away. Uh, I saw some of those pictures and I could feel the heat coming off the pictures. John that you posted. So hot weather, hot peppers. I don't know if that's a great combination. So maybe as it cools, we'll, we'll do a little better, but it's fun. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's that's a lot cool. of fun and it's good support for the, 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 uh, the Milton farmer's market as well. Absolutely. So shout out to the Milton farmer's market. shout out to the Milton farmer's market. Awesome. John Herbert with Herbert legal group. John, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Doing it again. Thanks yeah. Roger. Thank you, John, for coming John Ray for hosting. Absolutely. Hey, folks, just a quick reminder, we've got to give a big thanks to Frazier and Dieter. They're responsible for this uh, program, Business Speed, and Frazier and Dieter is one of the fastest-growing accounting and advisory firms in the United States for a simple reason. They serve the emerging client needs of their clients as they evolve, but that's not all. They serve uh, those clients from global Fortune 1000 to growing private businesses by accounting for today while advising for the future and they believe in investing in relationships to make a difference. Roger, you can't beat that. I appreciate that, John. Uh, yeah. We'll see you uh, next month. Uh, we'll have another great guest next month, and uh, it should be fun. It always is. For my uh, co-host here, Roger Lesby with Frazier & Dieter, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on Frazier & Dieter's Business Beat.